In this presentation, we're going to talk about the basics of how regression, classification work, and the vocabulary for how we describe the way we do machine learning. So I want to start with a really simple example. I'm going to train you like your artificial intelligence, and you're going to learn just like artificial intelligence would without even knowing it because you have natural intelligence. So here's our example. We're going to decide whether or not we go to the beach. I'm going to give you some information and you're going to learn my personal model of whether or not we go. Here's what I'm going to give you. The conditions, if it's sunny or it's overcast or it's raining, the temperature, and whether or not we go to the beach. Here's the data. I'm going to give you a bunch of points. So here's the first one. If it's sunny, and it's 85 degrees, then yes, we go to the beach. So every data point is going to be formatted like this, the condition, the temperature, and then a yes or no for whether or not we go to the beach. So there's your first data point. If it's sunny and 85, we'll go. So now if I tell you it's sunny and 85, do we go to the beach? You know the answer is yes. Here's another one. It's sunny, it's 75, yes, we go to the beach. So now you have these two data points. So if I were to ask you if it's sunny in 85 or sunny in 75, in both cases you would know, yes, we go to the beach. But already you've learned something because I could tell you it's sunny and it's 80 degrees and you don't have a data point for that yet, but you know that it's a really good chance that we're going to go to the beach because we'll go if it's warmer than that and we'll go if it's cooler than that. What you're doing is building a model in your head of how I make this decision, and only with these two data points you already are able to infer some information about whether we'll go. So here's some more. If it's cloudy in 95, yes, we'll go. If it's cloudy in 60, we will not go. So now you've also learned that there's a temperature point at which it will separate when we go, whether it's cloudy or not. For all you know, at this point, we could go anytime it's sunny. But now you know when it's cloudy, somewhere in between 95 and 60, there's a cutoff point. If it's raining and it's 80, no, we're not going to go to the beach. If it's sunny and 95, yes, we'll go to the beach. This should reinforce the model that you already have, that for warmer temperatures, we'll go. If it's raining in 93, we will not go. If it's cloudy in 79, yes, we will go. So this helps you determine that spot at which the threshold is for cloudiness. If it's 79, yes. So now we know the point of where I decide is somewhere between 60 and 79. If it's sunny and 50, we're not going to go to the beach. So now you know there are temperatures where it's too cold to go, even if it's sunny. If it's cloudy and 71, no, we won't go. If it's raining in 53, we won't go. If it's raining in 89, we won't go. If it's cloudy in 87, we will. If it's sunny in 81, we will. If it's cloudy in 67, we won't. And if it's raining in 72, we won't. So now you have a whole bunch of data points and probably already in your head you've built a model. So now, once you have trained yourself on this data, and training is a formal stage of machine learning, you now can test your model. Here's a couple test examples. If it's raining and it's 93, will we go to the beach or not? Hopefully your answer is no. There were no examples where we went to the beach when it was raining, including temperatures above and below this. If it's sunny in 93, will we go or not? Hopefully your answer is yes. We would go anytime it was sunny when it was above uh, certainly 80 degrees, and there's probably a threshold below that that you learned. What about when it's cloudy in 74? Now this one's hard because that 74 is right in this middle zone between a positive and a negative example. So you're going to have a lot of uncertainty on that and you're just going to make your best guess. Ideally, you'll eventually get some more data that will help you refine it. Um, but this is the nature of machine learning. You give the machine a bunch of data points like we did, it builds a model, and then you give it some new data points it hasn't seen before and ask it to give you the answer. Here's some terms that we want to use to refer to what we're doing. So you have features, sometimes called attributes, and those are essentially the elements of your data points. If it's cloudy, uh, or what the conditions are, so is it cloudy, raining, or sunny? The temperature would be another feature. Whether or not we go to the beach could be a feature too. Uh, usually we describe the features as the things that we're looking at to predict a class or a value. In this case, whether or not we'll go to the beach. But you could refer to the whole thing as your feature set. In Weka and in other places, these are sometimes referred to as attributes. Each feature or attribute has a type. Those 
fall into a bunch of categories depending on how fine-grained you want to be, but generally they're going to be numbers, uh, so 74 would be one. They can have decimal points as well. Um, strings, so you have a bunch of text. We didn't use any text here, but we will eventually be looking at how you can use text to build models. And then classes or categories. So for example, we had whether or not we'll go to the beach, and that could only have three values, sunny, raining, or cloudy. So we call that categories or nominal values. Now there are two main tasks that we do in machine learning, classification or regression. Classification uses those features to put each data point into a class or category. That's what we did in this example. We would take the data about the weather and then we would put it into the category of yes, we go to the beach or no, we don't. You can also do regression and this uses the feature to predict a number value. So you could say twist around what we did and I could tell you whether or not we went to the beach and what the conditions were, if it was raining or cloudy or sunny, and we could try to predict the temperature. Now, we probably couldn't do that with this data, but regression does things like that where it takes a whole bunch of inputs and it tries to predict a number at the end. So these are the main two tasks that you'll be doing in machine learning. So let's talk about the models that we build. So you took all that data and you probably came up with a model in your head. It may have looked something like this. Uh, this I have drawn out as what we call a tree-based system and there's a bunch of algorithms that use kind of decision trees in order to put things into a category. Uh, this is also really similar to a rule-based system. So you could come up with a set of rules. Uh, in this case, the rules are kind of implicit in the tree. So we start at the top and then the first thing we look at is the conditions. If it's raining, our answer is always going to be no. We don't have to look at the temperature. We have no examples where we went to the beach if it was raining. If it's cloudy, then we kind of learned to draw this line in the temperature to determine whether or not we go. And is this the right line? We don't know. It could be a little higher or lower. Um, but basically, we said in this tree, if it's over 75, yes, we'll go. If it's under 75, no, we won't. And the same thing for sunny. Here we looked at is it greater than or less than 60 degrees, which seemed to be about the cutoff point. And if it was warmer than 60, yes, we would go. If it was lower than 60, no. So we have this written out as a tree. You could also write it as a series of rules. And tree-based and rule-based algorithms are very common in machine learning. You could also do it a little more graphically, and this works both for classification or regression. So I have our three categories along the x-axis on the bottom. I have the temperature along the y-axis. And what we're looking at here is a red dot for no, we don't go to the beach, and a green dot for yes, we do go. And you can actually draw a line in this graph. There's a really nice sharp line that you could draw. So if you have a temperature that's above that, you're going to go, and if it's below that, you're not. Uh, this is common for how regression is done, but you can use this same approach uh, to basically build a function, even if you are predicting a category and doing classification. Now, there's major types of algorithms for machine learning. These are kind of categories. There's lots of algorithms within each of these. But tree-based and rule-based, we just looked at with that decision tree where you have a set of trees or rules. There's functions like we just looked at with that chart. There are neural networks. Now, these are way too complicated for what we're covering here. Um, but essentially, they're designed to mimic what we thought at the time was how the brain worked. We have a series of neurons where one piece of data goes in and it splits out into a couple potential decisions. Um, these are hooked together in a bunch of layers. They're super complicated. We as humans don't really understand what goes on inside them, uh, but they're very powerful and you can use these in Weka. So uh, we'll talk about those a little bit. It's a really powerful way to do machine learning, but it's also really hard to get into without a lot of math and deep knowledge. And finally, there are Bayesian systems. Uh, I actually love using Bayesian models. These are based on Bayes' theorem, which again is a little more mathematical than we're going to get into here, uh, but they essentially use probabilities in order to put a model together. And so when we're using Weka, you'll actually see categories for these major types of algorithms and then specific algorithms inside.